Uh, let's call the meeting to order. This is the Board of Public Works in Northampton, and this is our June 11th, 2014 meeting. Uh, first order of business for your approval is consideration of the minutes. And uh, would any, no, actually, the first order of business is public comment. Would anyone like to comment? General public comments. I could be a month off. All right, good, good. <laughs> Uh, Yay. Hearing of public comment, uh, next item will be um, the minutes. Someone has proposed we take all five minutes as a group. Well, okay. Oh, yeah, I, that's okay. Uh, it's okay with me. Move approval. Second. Were there any uh, changes or adjustments? And have those been? I, there was one date in the minutes, right? Right. In the, in the meeting of May 28th, yeah. the board meeting minutes, there was a date. Mm -hmm. It was incorrect. Yeah. I just noticed that there were no cookies in <laughs> So, uh, all in favor of approving those five groups of minutes as uh, presented? Uh, aye. Or amended? Thank you. Uh, first order of business is a, um, our, a discussion of the potential for authorizing the lead civic group to make trailhead and minor improvements on the Roberts Meadow water supply property. And what's your name? Sue Carbon, I'm the president of the Sue Carbon is here to talk to us about that? Well, I thought there was going to be a staff person from here talking about that. That, that would be I. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, BJ had sent out previously a um, one, two, three, four page memo, memo mm -hmm. on the proposed changes up there. And apparently, one of the nature trails that are up there is currently on private property and the Lead Civic Association is going to be moving it to an area that the city owns and the terminus of it at the reservoir road is actually already on city property. So they're going to straighten out the trail, get it off private property as their proposal. I don't have a blow up of that, but this is the map if anyone wants to see it. The blue line is the Scooby Trail where it currently goes on private property. Um, this block line here is what we own and they're going to move the trail to that. So it's all on city land, that's the goal. Anyone want to see? No, sure. I, saw it I reviewed it already. Okay. Right? Sure. Do you want to see it? Sure. So it looked to me like the city's land came up and took a 90 degree turn to get out to the road instead mm -hmm. of going straight. So what at that 90 degree turn? We own all the land at that 90 degree turn also up along the Long Reservoir Road. I yes. See. There's okay. another map, the one that it shows the uh, conservation of the water, the water uh, department property. Mm -hmm. Which is here. There you go. That's the one that really makes it. So it's the water department property in blue versus private. Yeah. It's a different we'll scale. Make it die clear. <coughs> okay. Fine. Yeah, because there's no people. So what okay. we're looking for is to give the Lead Civic Association permission to work on water supply land of maintaining this trail and relocating the trail, correct? Well, we have the easement. We've always had that easement from you guys. Mm -hmm. What we want to do is take off the dog leg and just send it straight to where the present entrance is. Right. But the easement will still be there. That that's right. the easement of record. Mm -hmm. So the dog leg will always be there, but the trail isn't there. Just so you know that. Any further questions or discussion? No. Um, Actually, let's do the vote, and then I, I just have another that I wanted to pass along. Do we already need a vote? Yes. We have. We second it. So uh, a yes vote is going to authorize the lead civic group to modify the trailhead. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Um, we, we occasionally get grants that we've used for purchasing watershed property. Mm -hmm. And some of these grants come with stipulations that we should look for ways to allow passive recreation on these properties that the grants are being used to purchase. Although historically, we've been a little fussy about watershed property mm -hmm. and protecting it. Mm -hmm. And um, there have been some conversations just between me and Jim and Nicole. That they haven't gotten very far yet. But uh, the city engineer is of the opinion that if we were going to look at gently expanding our what we allow mm -hmm. in the watershed areas mm -hmm. <coughs> the the best place to be looking for those opportunities at least initially would be somewhere around those reservoirs on, on either side of the street yeah. um, and that whole discussion got derailed by the stormwater ordinance 
and a million other things recently. But um, if your group comes up with any ideas or can see any opportunities that maybe we haven't thought about. Well, what we know is, and if you look at the map, <coughs> the one in the dotted lines, I don't know if it's shown on that one, I think it's this one. Mm -hmm. So all the dotted lines here are places on the watershed property where people are already mm -hmm. making their own trails. But we can't put them on the map as yet. We have to stay on legal. Right. So yeah, that's already happening. It would be great if we could do that. One of those areas that goes to the cliffs, which is historically where they got all the, you know, granite out for the dams and everything. Uh -huh. So that would be nice. A walking trail would be thrilled. Well, I, so I, I'm not. I'm just saying that there's talking has begun. Mm -hmm. That's great. And if if your group has some ideas and mm -hmm. you know if it's coming from us and from you, mm -hmm. it makes sure. it more likely right. something will happen. So. Absolutely. And sure. These water supplies are emergency backup water supplies. They haven't been mm -hmm. used since. <coughs> I think 1960 was the last time we used water from the middle reservoir. Mm -hmm. So then in fact the pipes have been absolutely, they're disconnected. You can't flow water from the reservoir to the city. Hmm. So we, we were just spitballing, thinking about, you know, are there any opportunities for a boardwalk around the back side of the reservoir, around the west side? Hmm. Um, well, we would certainly be happy to look into it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it'd have to be a conversation. Sure, absolutely. I'm just, no you know, it just occurred to me yeah, that'd with be you great. being here. That Yep, great. We're always looking forward to it. There was <laughs> reference to that in fact made in the email that came with all the information. Okay. Uh, I, I mm -hmm. thought that was a great idea. Yeah, I think it's great. Okay. Okay, great. So that's okay. We can go ahead with it. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for coming in. Um, so we have someone here to talk about uh, street art, and I wonder if we could have a motion to take 10B out of order. So moved. Second. Okay. Nick Maynard uh, came to BJ last week or so, Nick Maynard, uh, with a question about displaying some art. And it left her in the awkward position of trying to <laughs> define that. art. So this is a permit. OK. So the permit, this is where I so, so fine arts, for the purposes of our policy, includes only, and only is a word in here, Painting, sculpture, collage, prints, original photography, video art, books sold by the author with no ISBN number, and documentary films. It does not include crafts or decorative arts of any kind. So this is what BJ was working on. Right. Nick, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us about what you were hoping to do. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Nicholas Maynard. Uh, thank you so much for having me here today. Um, the art in question is these here. Um, this is part of a set that was commissioned by a good friend of mine. Um, it's called a phonetic alphabet block set. Um, it's incomplete. This one has to be cut into the 26 pieces. This is three of them. Um, some of you may know there's an alphabet, the NATO phonetic alphabet, if you're talking on radios, it can be difficult to communicate. But if you say Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, there's something for every letter and they're all in the bottom edge of the block. So it's like an educational child's toy. I made one for my cousin. Um, she's my youngest cousin that has had a child, so I made it for her for her birthday. Um, I have been an artist since childhood. I have won awards for different art. I grew up in Palmer High, uh, Palmer, Massachusetts. I got these awards in Palmer High. I got silver keys from the International Boston Globes Classic Art Award for these. They're ceramic sculpture. Sculpture is allowed for the permit, but um, under the um, read, by reading that permit, these things are not necessarily considered sculpture, perhaps. Um, this is one that my friend asked me to do. Um, his name John Linscott. He's a very avid fencer. He's uh, an A in one weapon, which is the highest rating you can be, aside from being in the Olympics. And uh, he was, he turned 26 on January 24th, 2013. I burned this in about four hours with the sunlight that was shining on his birthday. Um, I do it for people, in front of people as they watch. I uh, use just tools of either pencils, sunlight captured with a magnifying glass, and welding goggles, because it's very bright. And I let people you know, borrow a pair if they want to watch along. Um, I've made hundreds of blocks and probably over 100 sales in different cities around. Um, but getting a permit is actually quite difficult to do. 
Um, as people say, it's very easy to get forgiveness, not easy to get permission. Um, so I'm trying to go the hard way and get permission. Um, but if you'd like to inspect the work, I'd be happy to show you. I have um, many different pictures of things that have been commissioned and sales that I have made. Um, here's the phonetic alphabet block that I made, the, the set of phonetic alphabet blocks, a work in progress mm -hmm. that I gave to my cousin. Um, I, picked, I just picked, printed out pictures uh, from art.com and not very, not very different. There's pictures on art.com under fine art of prints from Van Gogh's series, which is just line art, which is considered fine art. Not very different. There's fan, there's bird, dove of peace. It's a very simple outline, but it's considered fine art. Um, <laughs> I have other things here. My biggest, I guess my biggest work so far in terms of, here's a, a couple girls asked me to draw pandas. So I made pandas for a couple girls. Oh, sure. Um, someone uh, was Irish and loved cats and had strong Christian faith and had me make three blocks for them. Um, this is rough. There's another cat that I made because someone also liked the cat very much. And someone wanted me to make a T-Rex. She loved it very much. She was an uh, anthropology major at University of Massachusetts, which is where I made that one. Um, here's just a collection of different blocks, mostly guitars. Uh, G-claps, which I think I've produced 10 at least at this point. Um, here's me making the large block that I have. So if you have the um, it was actually, I, I know it was below freezing that day. I'm pretty sure it was less than 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which was freezing, but the sun, the sky was blue and the process works very well when the sky is blue. And last but not least is this. Um, my friend works for Hooters Restaurant and he wanted to he wanted to have something that goes above a door that you can slap. And um, it came out came out really, really well. Uh, the new logo for the Hooters was um, came out perfect and um, he's actually talking to Hooters to have one made for multiple restaurants. So so Nick are <coughs> Some of what you've shown us, I think, oh, all right, well, maybe that's art. Some, some does seem to be more of a craft, signs, signage, hmm. that sort of thing. Yeah. Thoughts yeah. around the table? Yeah. Well, I reviewed the language, and it does talk about fine arts, and there's always this, for me, a very difficult, I think, uh, perception that everyone struggles with what's the difference between fine art and a craft art. Um, but what I see is uh, I saw the first thing was the word prints is included and I see this as a block print it's just you're not using ink. I think what makes it unique is that it's also is a, is a form of performance. You're actually doing the art. People mm -hmm. can see you do it. It's not just you're selling your art, you're actually doing the art. And your uh, technique is pretty unusual. I have to say, I'm fascinated. Uh, Thank you. Using sunlight to uh, create an image on on wood. So I don't see how that's significantly different over some of the stuff that we've authorized in the past. And one of them, I can't remember what it was called, but the uh, uh, it's like a photo print that the people put directly on the sidewalk. I don't remember what that was called. Oh yeah, those yeah. photographs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Transfers. Transfers, yeah, and they were uh, they were temporary in nature. Right, there's a picture up on the wall yeah. where Pico, yeah. I think her name was. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't, I guess that I'm, I would say yes based on the word print and that we allow performance art. And I don't know if there's a different kind of performance art than there is for this, I can't remember. I would uh, be happy to um, make a documentary of it because people are very fascinated with Well, give us a chance to finish talking about it for a second, Nick. So if he's selling his art downtown, which I assume this is part of it, then he would need an arts person, an arts permit. Fine arts permit. Fine arts permit is what he would need. Not a performer's permit. 
and, and that's where BJ felt stuck. Right, we, we were shown the block of the cat with the heart on it and the, a block of the guitar on it. Yeah. We were looking at it and we're like, it isn't really quite sculpture. Is it utilitarian in nature? What can be used for like when he had the, the alphabet there? It's a teaching tool. Is that a craft? Is that something that's utilitarian in nature, like a coffee mug with a print on it? You know, that's where these fine lines come in. That mm -hmm. do we say yes or we say no? And we initially said no to this one, okay. right. and we could be wrong. Well, it seems like there's a couple different issues here. I agree with you. I think it does come under the guidelines of print, so it would be acceptable in that way. The other issue is having to make decisions on this on a case-by-case -case basis, but it doesn't come up that often. Right. No. So if you don't mind bringing it, it's like I don't mind having it. I, rather than changing the the um, the, per, the permit language, that I'm happy with having it come where we talk. About yeah, I mean it's only occasional. Right. Exactly. That we haven't. Right. And the third issue, though, is what what's been addressed a little bit: the fact that that it is sort of performance art, that something is happening during that. But again, if we're talking about being willing to do it on a case-by-case -case basis, I'm okay with it. And that. I have one other, I just want to say, first of all, I support your saying no. I'm, I'm, oh, yeah. yeah. I, no. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I want fine. somebody to be the gatekeeper somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a second. Um, and I just want to say one more supportive uh, remark on, on what is art, what isn't art. I think these are one-off pieces as well. So mm -hmm. I think they're made in real time. Um, it's not they're, like they're being mass-produced, but when you think of traditional printmaking, they are mass-produced. So if you did a silk screen, for instance, we would accept that as, as for sale, but, but you could make thousands of them. So I think that puts this back into the fine art category. If they're, they're, you, you're making them holding a magnifying glass, which is really cool. I don't see it doing thousands in, in an afternoon. The ones that are made maybe 20 in a day, and it was a perfect that day. Been a long, that had been I was like making June the exit <laughs> <laughs> Were you on a, hill, on a hilltop? Sunburn? Sun <laughs> morning, noon, and afternoon sunlight. Is there a specific area where you would be located? Um, yeah, as long as I have direct sunlight, um, usually I've, I've done a bunch of work in front of, um, I believe it's pronounced Dobra Tea House, mm -hmm. downtown Northampton. Um, I've also done, I've also been on the corner of Route 9 and Route 5, but there's, I believe there's a bank there. Um, and then I've also gone in front of, it's closer towards, uh, across the street from the Academy of Music. Um, just in downtown where people are walking by because people walk by and um, wearing welding goggles I mostly can't see anything <laughs> I can see outlines sort of um, and I just hear people walking by oh that's awesome oh that's cool hey look what this guy's doing um, we have restrictions on the locations mm -hmm. there's only a few locations that right. they can go to right. mm -hmm. so, for this permit two thoughts Neither one will be constructive. <laughs> Why aren't you in Alaska right now? It's got like 20 hours of sunshine. <laughs> and no people. <laughs> right, no people. And the, and the second is, this hardly seems like a, an appropriate topic for this board. I know it's not that, that we get wrangled into making decisions about art when there are agencies and boards in the city that deal with art. And, and it just, leaves me sort of wondering. We'd be more than pleased to bring this and give this to the Arts Council to move forward with all artist permits. If they'd if be willing. Like. Would they take it? I don't I mean, know if they yeah. would or not. I can ask Brian Foote that. Yeah. I mean, I, if, if the consensus is to go forward with this, I think we ought to deal right. with it today, but right. in the future, my heavens. I think the top, topic of who should decide what's art and what isn't has come up many, many times, and I think it all comes down to who controls the street and the sidewalks. I think that's why that's it all ends up back here. here. Yeah. Maybe. What we need is we need we need more artists on the board. We'd probably need a two-part well, that would rarely be helpful. from the Arts Council. <laughs> <laughs> you could take yeah. a class in art. <laughs> Like if they approve it as being fine art, then we automatically issue them a permit up yeah. there. How would that mark? Or, uh, Mike? Yeah, yeah. That Absolutely. way, you wouldn't involve the, involve the board. You strictly just staff administering a permit. Sure. That's all. I like that. Are you talking about that? I'll talk to Brian about I that. I love her.
Yeah. All right, so meanwhile, um, would anyone like to make a motion regarding Nick and his application? I move we uh, grant his permit. I second it. Okay. Any further questions or discussion? All in favor of giving Nick a permit? Aye. 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 Okay, nicely done. Fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. So you'll have to come back. I'm sorry. During business <laughs> hours. <laughs> 8.30 to 4. 8.30 tomorrow morning. Okay. Then we'll be here. Oh, the door's good. locked. Just burn your way through. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a look. I'll be using the It's a metal door. Don't come tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks. If you want to, if I could leave these, I just printed them. Um, I'd be happy to leave these if anyone would sure. be interested. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Take care. Okay, so, next. So, so the second part of this was street performance permit. We had a, a person come in who wanted to do puppets with a boom box. And we told her no, no amplified music. And she was adamant, I think that she was gonna come here and she's not here. Okay. Right. Well, I told her that um, we would discuss it first okay. and then if, if need be. Thank you. So Thank you. she, was going to do this little show and she says she plays her boombox very low and so the permit says no mechanical electrical battery powered systems it's all prohibited if they're having amplifying equipment um so that's why i brought it to you i had said to bj she started by emailing me and i said Man, that's a tough spot to be in to figure out whether wood burning is art, but the boom box is a little clearer anyway. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. And while she, I'm sure she would play it low. But then it's hard to say next to the next boom box. Exactly. Not everyone. Exactly. <laughs> and how do we guarantee that somebody goes, uh, could you turn that off? You know, right. she wants to be. You know, it's, it's a okay. okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so we we were um, we hardy few were up in Village Hill uh, back on May twenty eighth, looking at uh, some of the roads up there for acceptance. And someone has proposed we just vote on all four of them as a group. They're, they're just little fragments of road, but they're all contiguous. Is this someone that's doing all this proposing? <laughs> Some unnamed person. <laughs> There's one road in its entirety, the rest are portions of. But they all touch. They do. I'm just going to say, there was no opposition to... Absolutely none. Uh, very homogeneous crowd. I think we were, it was all us. <laughs> Except for <laughs> one, the one, guy. The one, one, well, the woman, woman on the porch. Yeah. Right. And then one guy. Yes, my and and have, have these streets met the DPW's requirements so, so for the construction? Standards, that's correct. Yep. I'm ready to, yeah. But I move we approve <coughs> them for street acceptance. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor of accepting the end of Olander Drive, a portion of Village Hill Road, Ford Crossing, and a portion of Mosher Street as public ways. Okay. And we are recommending to the City Council that they yes. complete the acceptance. Aye. 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 Okay. Yeah, thank you. We'll be uh, plowing. <laughs> <laughs> just, just saying thank you. But now you don't have to pick up your plow and turn around, you just keep driving around. Oh no, we have to stop exactly. A portion of Moses Street, there's a line we have to stop. That's the part that sometimes gets confusing for the truck driver. Those are crazy parking places, too. That is a uh, very impossible place to plow. It's very yeah, difficult. And do you, I, I, I have a customer up there, one of the quadra, the four families, mm -hmm. and I was looking at it. The parking dips in and then comes back out again. Do you? Do the plows have to? They they would end up doing is you end up doing all that plowing it and then you go back after you plowed it all open and you push each spot. So each one of those little spots that dips in, you have to drive into it, push the snow, lift up the plow, kind of push the snow on the yeah the little nub out that's right there, mm -hmm. and so you have to go around a couple of times. But when you have 12 inches of snow, you basically lose that last parking space. Yeah. So we actually have to do snow removal there. Similar to what we do like uh, in the neighborhoods off of uh, Market Street where the, the 
it's very narrow right. because there is limited parking. Most people have it's mostly it's all on street parking there. Yeah. So design wise, it wasn't it's not the best design for for snow plowing removal. Ninety one is the best, but that's we don't. This is a ninety one one here. It's so. <laughs> the best. <coughs> okay. So those are all, we're gonna recommend the city council accept all of those. Next uh, for discussion, the contract uh, for catch basin frames and grates. Uh, catch basin frames, grates, and manhole frames and covers to EJ Prescott in the amount of $17,900. And this will come out of the sewer enterprise fund. Move approval. Second. So we had three bidders on this and EJ Prescott was the lowest bidder on this. The high bid was $18,763.60 and the bid was for um, quantity wise 20 catch, bait, 20 catch basin uh, four sided flanges, 10 three sided flanges and 15 Pamrex type drain manholes. So there's a quantity in each one of these. This is basically our annual contract for purchasing for the sewer drain division. Mm -hmm. If I ever check the state state yard over there, we have piles that I was kicking around. Those aren't ours. No, but are they surplus? They're all gone. They're gone. They're okay. gone. They scrapped everything in that yard next door this winter. Any questions? All in favor of awarding the contract for catch basin frames, grates, and manhole frames? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next, a uh, contract for Barrett Street rubberized. Barrett Street rubberized chip seal. Is it chip seal for Barrett Street or is Barrett Street a brand name? It is. Barrett Street is a street in our city and we're, prepared, we're proposing the chip seal with rubberized chip seal. Okay. So contract for putting rubberized chip seal on Barrett Street to Allstate's asphalt in the amount of $49,730. approval. So this is utilized in Chapter 90 funds. Um, we were trying to include this in our annual pavement contract, but we couldn't because it was kind of a specialty work. And actually, we only had one bidder on it, which was all states. Um, basically, what it is, instead of using like an oil stone penetration of, of country roads, it's a combination of asphalt with a rubberized compound in it with a dark stone, a, ch a chip stone. And basically, what it does is when it goes down, it actually seals out water coming into the cracks in the future. Um, I've been watching with good success in other communities with it, and I've been wanting to try it for a couple of years in Northampton, and this was identified as a good candidate street to do it on, look at it, and see how it performs. So this is the full length of Barrett Street, so from yes. um, Jackson to King? That's correct. Is it a spray-on? or? It is a spray-on application, then the stones go down, the stones are actually pre-coated with the material also. So it isn't like your traditional, traditional oil and stone where you see a lot of stone on the side of the road and dust. And it's a completely different setup than, like I said, traditional oil and stone. Mm -hmm. yeah, also, it's a fairly high volume street, I would say. So we'll get a really good indication as to durability. Yeah. Durability, you know, the wearing course of it, and also how well it keeps water out of the street yeah. from going in and creating potholes and other stresses. Poor Mike has been waiting to say something. Is the Price similar to what we expected? That I don't know. I can get you that information. And when you have one bidder, you need to make a judgment on whether or not the, the price is reasonable. That's a good point. I'm also curious how that would compare with traditional tar and gravel if we were to do that kind of a surface seal uh, application as opposed to asphalt, which I know would be a lot more expensive. We discussed this once before, didn't we? Then? Yeah, you had a street last year. We did. We wanted to do Kennedy Road with it. And when we got, um, I'm trying to remember who was out there, uh, one of the prospective bidders, he came back and says, you don't want to do this road because you'll never hire me again because it will fall apart in three or four years. So we scurried around and Kennedy Road actually became a reclaim to the entire roadway. But we were seeking alternate streets that we could do this, this type of uh, <coughs> application on and Barrett Street came up as a, a good street for it, a candidate street. It's got a good traffic volume on it. Um, you know, all the utilities are in pretty good shape underneath it, so we don't see that will be an issue, so let's try it somewhere. I think in, in the previous mention, there was a figure of $40,000, but I don't, I'm not sure of the figure, and I'm not sure of the context. 
but, but I think it did name Barrett Street. Okay, I can look for that. So I don't know if it my head did. must have been fairly recent. Well, maybe it was in the, um, the uh, proposal, the, uh, the paving proposal that you just wrote. You had That someone, was in there. Yeah, and I'm... That I was just last week, or yeah, right. Maybe yeah, yeah I think and it was in that one. But there was, but a, it would have been this figure. But there was a memorandum one. from VHB about Baird Street and other candidate streets that we could look at River right. Chip Ceiling on. Yeah. After Kennedy Road um, didn't work out. Mm -hmm. The intention with that document is that as there is more information, uh, Jim and Rich will kind of keep updating that mm -hmm. document so it's got the latest information all along in their spare time. I, I, you know, I have a question. The state was putting down some asphalt on Bridge Street out by Lincoln, so past our portion of responsibility. And they were two, just two guys with shovels sprinkling it in the places where the first layer of pavement is broken up mm -hmm. and then slapping it with the back of the flat shovel. Is that, Rick? Is that Best practice. It's in the manual. It's in the manual. Okay, yeah. all right. It's in the state manual, not the city manual. That's how we used to do it when I first came here. Or we roll it with the tires, one or the other. We graduated, we have a tamper now. Okay. So that's in lieu of a tamper. Yeah, it's just they're a good firm slap with the back of the shovel and move on to the next crack. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, next we have a re. I think we need to vote. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Good, good spot. So um, a yes vote is going to approve the contract with all states to put the rubberized chip seal on Barrett Street. Uh, Excuse me. The, the comment in, in the plan was the estimated cost for Barrett Street is $40,000. That was pre-bid? That was pre-bid. And if that's the number, I'm, I would support this. I mean, when you have one bidder, you're not as likely to get a deal, and this is I don't think too, too far out of the stretch to, and, I, and we want to proceed with it, so I would support it. Do you have any other questions? No. Okay. All right, so a yes vote approves the contract with Allstate for chip sealing Barrett Street. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. We have a request for permission to occupy Pulaski Park on Saturday, October 4th and Sunday the 5th from 9 until 5 p.m. Um, each day. And this will be for the Shelter Sunday event by ServiceNet. Second. This is an annual event we have at the park every year. Um, they have all the uh, insurance, concurrences, money paid. This year they're doing it for two days, uh, Saturday, October 4th, and Sunday, October 5th, which is a change from the past. They usually only did it on Sunday. Um, this year's event is sponsored by ServiceNet and the Friends of Hampshire County Homeless Individuals Safe Passage, the SRO Project, Grace House and Manna Soup Kitchen. All funds raised are used directly by these organizations to help the hungry and the homeless. Any questions? Thoughts? Comments? <coughs> All in favor of granting shelter uh, service net permission to use the park on October 4th and 5th? Aye. 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 Next we have a request for permission to use, I presume, part of Philosophy Park by Beth Tesquin, is what I would say. Uh, every Tuesday in July, that would be the 8th, 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th, between 9.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. to conduct free yoga classes. Um, everything's in order on this also. Uh, certificate insurance, police department occurrence, academy music concurrence. The only extra thing in here that I thought was a little bit different was that if possible she'd like to hang a small banner or sign on the day of the classes, simply stating that <clears throat> free go classes happen today, 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. She's not advertising her business there on the sign, as far as I know. So that's not a kind of abnormal thing in it, which I don't have an issue with. Do we have a place where the banner would go? Um, I assume it's somewhere near the entrance of the park so people pass by can see it. Maybe by the flowering dogwood trees. Um, would she put posts? I mean, no, do we have any sense? Probably of hung on something that's out there. A tree or something? Yeah. She wasn't very specific. And she, does she need she needs insurance? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it? 
we have that. We have an assurance. Yep. Any questions, Mike? Um, do we have any guidelines on activities that take place in the park? Mm -hmm. Is it any activity as long as they comply with insurance? Mm -hmm. It's what you approve. Yep. Okay, that's fine. And I'm comfortable with it. So all in favor of giving Beth permission to have her yoga classes in the month of July? Aye. Aye. Okay. Here you go. Aye. Uh, okay. No, they should be different colors then. Probably not. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the same one. Right. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> is this free advertising for business and how many times can somebody do this before it becomes That's an excellent cheaper question. than putting that in the newspaper to solicit customers? I, I don't know. It's, I, mean, uh, I guess that's that's a, I'll take that as a comment. That's a comment. That, that, it's a concern, that could be a concern. Some pet food city come over and you're free. Whatever. Okay. The benefits to It's not really free. It's like the permit's 50, and then you have to get insurance, and the deposit's 200. So. No, she's clearly stepping up to do this. As you yeah. Might. It's the yoga lifestyle. <laughs> um, all right, so the next section is <laughs> topics yoga. that didn't quite make it into the agenda. Um, you've probably all seen uh, Ned and Jim and Doug. They've been working hard, and I'm sure Rich is involved with uh, creating a standard operating procedures for making sure that we've done everything we can to minimize the chance of the um, incident on Church Street at the top of State Street. What do you call it? The Barrett Street Brook as it King comes down Street. the hill? It's called, actually, it's, in the old days, it's called Street. King Street Brook, and yeah. now it's called the Barrett Street Marsh. So it's had some different names over time, but. I still know it is King Street Brook. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's what it was made named in 1905 when they deserted it. You were alive in 1905. I was not, but I'm trying to think if my great grandfather was. He must have. Been. My grandfather was born in the 1800s. Yes, mine too. Well, anyway, uh, so uh, Jim has asked us not to take any particular action. He's given a, a copy of it to us. Does anybody or, need a copy? It came I, an email. I read through okay. it in the email. Yeah. So this is strictly for distribution, and then uh, we're going to talk about it at our next board meeting. And my understanding is, in part, Jim yeah. would like to wait until you've had a chance to dredge mm -hmm. that uh, yeah. catch basin on the sediment basin. Yeah, to, to do the work on both sides, actually. Give us a better idea of exactly what it's going to take for us to do the continuous maintenance that we're going to have to do after this. Mm -hmm. So once we complete it, we'll have a better understanding of you know, how long it's going to take, how much it costs, things of that nature. She needs one for the record. Yeah, just for the record. And then, Thanks. Ned, yeah. would it be fair to say that <coughs> kind of behind all of this immediate work, there'd be some I don't know if it'd be a study or whatever, but to look for any low-hanging engineering projects that could help I think like for example even if we put a swale up there is that an, an engineering job it's an engineering job it needs to be permitted that's permitted the okay. conservation commission um, probably any work on the water body itself is probably going to require a permit from the Army Corps of Engineers as a navigable waterway mm -hmm. so what yeah but well, we did the sedimentation pond that was I think three years of permitting to get permission to do that pond back in 2002, I think it was constructed. And if, for example, we determine that that 4x4 culvert doesn't have enough capacity for a storm surges, and we want to add another one or something, same deal? Years same of deal, permitting? probably at least a year of permitting at a minimum. If you want to establish another outfall pipe or overflow pipe next to the existing culvert, <coughs> it's going to be a process. Yeah. And well, we're, we're starting to look at the whole route too, not just to the marsh, but beyond the marsh. Mm -hmm. right? There's another four by four culvert, culvert. There's two, and then there's a five by four culvert. There's three different culverts downstream. Right. right. There's a culvert through the CVS parking lot. Then there's another culvert underneath the railroad tracks. After that, just free flows to the Connecticut River. Now there's a culvert on Barrett Street. 
right. There's the Colbert yeah. on Barrett Street also. That's correct. And Barrett Street, over, it overtops on Barrett Street, depending on the, the event, right? I've never seen Barrett Street overtopped. I've seen it come close, but I've never seen it overtop Barrett Street. It's gone over. It's gone over in Floyd. It was over. I wasn't here in Floyd. What's the consequence when it goes over? When that, that basically the marsh is completely saturated, and uh, Floyd was the first event that I can remember historic. I mean, I'm sure the residents could tell you, but that's the first his event that I remember going to Agnes Fox Park mm -hmm. and Church Street and dealing with the flooding that was existing there. Is there property damage when that happens? Uh, other than the people on at the end of State Street, and the, State Street was severely flooded in the end of all of Church Street like it was this last time. Yeah. Similar, they had five feet of water in their basements. But when Barrett, when Barrett Street goes up and over the road, I think the only thing we had at the time that caused it was other problems with the um, Coastline Apartments at that one time. Mm. Had that issue with the um, yes. fl flooding in their uh, lower levels of their building because the marsh had risen to a certain point and they mm. had some infiltration. So we used to do a lot of bypass pumping during just heavy rain events. Yeah. But typically not. We, we received a call from a, a woman who owns property on Denise Court off of Barrett Street. Her house has flooded two, or the ba the basement has flooded two times in the last year, and she doesn't remember do it doing that in the past. So mm -hmm. That's that's right next to that the channel that runs from Barrett Street mm -hmm. to the culvert that starts behind CVS, and so we're looking at whether something different is going on in that channel. Is there any blockage visible in, in that section? There's beaver debris in the whole section. All the way the, down there. And there's a grate at oh. the end of that that it gets caught on, and we clean it regularly, but it's, and so that may be part of it, that it's it needs to be cleaned right. even more often. Right. So I see we're getting off schedule. We're actually talking about informational item number one now. So I'm not sure where we want to draw the line on the uh, King Street Brook draft SOP versus informational number one. Okay, well, we, or if we just want to fold them together, that's yeah. fine. Just we can fold them together. I, I, I'm, I'm sure you want to talk about the billing, too. Is there anything else on the King Street Brook? Any other? Rich, can you give an update? Um, I can just give you an update of what we've done, and I don't know if Jim shared uh, this information with you. It's an internal Update that he's been actually giving to the residents. Have you been? Have you received? Yeah, yeah. 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 So basically, on my end of it, on the operations end of it, we have basically at this point we've uh, we have identified uh, a contractor who's actually going to come in and uh, do the work. Who's going to remove the debris of the excavator? Prior to that, we've gone in and we have grubbed the whole area. Um, we did receive our emergency permit, uh, emer uh, emergency orders from Constown on Monday. So we have 30 days to do the work that will be done before then. Um, we've grubbed the whole area. Uh, all the beaver deceivers have been removed as of today, with the exception of the one that is in the sedimentation basin. We'll do that one tomorrow. Mm -hmm. There's been no signs of any beaver activity that we've seen. Um, and we've jet rod. We were gonna, actually going to jet rod that culvert again today, but we did not. We ran out of time. The sewer division had a, another issue they had to deal with. Does that, does that mean that it's filling right up again? Um, no, because what we've done is every time we've jet rided, we've actually done it with a backhoe because we've created an island. From jet riding, and all the material just rises up out of there. So we take a backhoe and we pull all that sediment that is in the pond up on the side just to kind of dewater on its own okay. and allow it to, to free flow. Um, but once we start the process next week, we'll probably be bypass pumping by the middle of the week if everything goes well and the weather's okay. And then we'll actually have that sediment basin dried out where we can actually remove the material that's in there and, and get to the three foot level below the uh, mm -hmm. the culvert. So we, we estimate it's going to take about a week to do all of that. Should take a week. That was our, our estimate it was based on. So, um, and then we've uh, you know, been working with the residents still on Church Street uh, doing little odds, odds and ends. We have to go down there and fill some sinkholes in the Lambert's property. Um, we did put uh, rat bait uh, in the sanitary sewer system just to alleviate any issues. But we basically think the rats are actually the ones that residents are talking about are located in the banking of the uh, by that actually live right by that manhole uh, where the where the uh, sanitary sewer starts in that area. But there's 
they seem to have a rat problem altogether. Okay. I, I was walking around the backyards, and a lot of the there's a lot of rat holes in that banking itself. So I, I don't think it's really related to the sanitary sewer. I just think it's... There may be garbage in the back of Stop and Shop? Or? Probably. There's so many food sources uh, yeah. in that location. And it's nice and damp over there all the time. So um, So is it likely the manhole is cracked or broken open in that sanitary? No. No, what we found is that by doing a little investigation, we found that there was at one time, and correct me if I'm wrong, we think a culvert that actually crossed underneath the old railroad tracks that actually tied into the head of the sanitary sewer that starts the 48 inch brick main. So we actually crawled down in there and looked and you can see that someone took the time and effort to fill it up with soil. And it was not, uh, it was not from soil that has, you know, trickled in from the, mm -hmm. from the ground level. So the issues around that structure are just, we think just basically from runoff coming off the bike path, but the structure seems to be intact with the exception of there's a small, um, separation between the actual old culvert, the box culvert that's there, and the actual brickwork that's in there. So we're going to go in there and parge that to try to alleviate some of that. But I don't see that that has really been, been, a, been an issue. Um, I think we've identified that the fact that the water just reaches a certain level and it floods through Lambert's property. And engineering went out and shot a, a lot of grades there this week, or the end of last week as well, to give uh, engineering a, a better s scale or scope of you know what the elevations are and what we can do to alleviate that so in a, in a moderate event the water will hopefully go down state street and then hopefully the water will never go down state street again but if it does it'll it'll channel it channel itself around right. and then eventually make it to uh you know into the into the catch basin that is over there on uh, church street so we've actually done a lot in a, in a very short period of time it's been pretty amazing and the staff's been the staff has really been We've all just kind of worked together to try to solve this issue these folks. So we're getting there. I don't know when this is appropriate, but to bypass pump, you need to run a hose across the bike path. Yes. Do you have plans to either close the bike path or put some ramps so people can uh, well, I think what we're going to do is the safest thing to do because of the, all the equipment's going to be there <coughs> um, because we're going to have trucks going in and out up that large ramp in the sanitation yeah. pond and then actually backing up into the water department yard and uh, dumping their this, the uh, spoils and actually mm -hmm. letting them uh, do water there. So we're just going to make a detour. I think we're going to detour right at Jackson Street so people can actually ride their bikes or walk their bikes up the handicap accessible ramp yeah. and go all the way down around uh, Prospect and then come down. And I'm, I think it's the safest thing to do because today we were out there working and yesterday trying to do all this little this work and we tried to leave it open and the people were just you know, loader was backing up. We had a huge long bull rope pulling out the piping and everything. And then, you know, if that rope ever snapped and somebody went on, that would be the end of them. So I think people just don't really get it. I mean, unless you do it for a living and, you know, you tell them to stop, they get very impatient. But I think it's best to just make a detour. Sure. Okay. Well. okay. Thanks, Roger. You're welcome. Okay. <coughs> um, one year extension on the contract for gaseous chlorine, the JCI J Jones chemical, and, uh, which will carry us through July 8, 2015. Second. Current price is $750 per one ton container. Um, in this contract, the one year extension is with a price increase from either JCI Jones Chemical Inc. or a maximum of the um, consumer price, the CPI for the Northeast. So I imagine that the increase will be a maximum of around 3%, just so you're aware of that. Okay. And this will be the only supply for chlorine for the wastewater treatment plant. All in favor of approving this contract extension? Aye. 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 Great. Uh, stormwater and flood control update, perhaps now finish up that one? Sure. We'll do that. Doug? Updates of where we are, especially with the um, billing. Yep. So the so the billing um, database that we've been working with CDM to get a impervious area numbers and a final billing database is still in process. We're back and forth. We've been pushing to get this thing very accurate, um, and it's taken longer than we thought. 
and we had to make a call this week to decide to not hold up the water bills. We're two weeks behind and on our and, and water and sewer bills. plan on uh, the, the first stormwater flood control bill going out in the next quarter and perhaps doubling up that bill or doing a third, a third, a third for the three remaining quarterly bills. And did we get approve, approval from the city solicitor to, I saw the email going out inquiring. My understanding that. from Susan Wright is that there's enough wiggle room that we can do something like that. Okay. We just need to decide what we're going to do, how we're going to go about doing it. There's also a conversation about perhaps there's a separate utility billing for this first quarter that's standalone all by itself. And you'll pay more in posters, but at least that bit mean <coughs> either we wait a quarter or maybe we wait a month and a half. Mm -hmm. I'd rather wait a month and a half and get a bill out sure. than a full quarter. So we think it'll be another two months. I think you're, we're you're very, saying we're, we're, we're saying mid-August is that the month and a half, or do you mean month and a half from now? No, that would be the month and a half. Well, so around the first or first beginning of August. That would probably be the earliest if the database is correct. And right. we still has to run basically performance to make sure everything works right and aligns right for the units right. and the mm -hmm. bills and. There's a number of things that need to get done. We have to manually go into every single <coughs> account in the me. city <coughs> and make a change. We have to add a, a record to manually to every single account, mm -hmm. which is thousands. And then we have to create a new account for every single person that doesn't have water and sewer if they just have a parcel or something right. else. Mm -hmm. So we have no idea how long all of that's going to take. We can't start it until we're ready to yeah. put the bills in. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. And has CDM been a good partner on this? They've been good. It, perhaps it's been a little more complicated than they thought. Um, you know, I'm I'm definitely frustrated. I wish that we had started earlier and were further along so that we could get this out. Um, but you know, it's, it's a complicated thing to, mm -hmm. to put together. It's, and I think instead of rushing it, I think it's a good thing to get these first bills right, right. because right. Sure. we don't want to come back and explain why there's a lot of mistakes. Right. We'd rather get them right. So, Mike? Is there, is there a plan that by the time FY15 is over, we've, we've caught up? Yeah. So well, that we get all the bills out in FY15, so we get all that revenue? That well, we the revenue right. won't be in by the end of FY15. That's one of the issues is it's going to fall shy because some people are getting their bills in June next year that they probably won't pay it till August, July or August. So, I but our plan our is to bill for all. Yes, right. Yeah. So at least on a billing basis, we're yeah. going to try, and then yeah. the revenue will come in when it comes in. And we build the section so section one and two, like we're starting the new fiscal year, section one and two, July three and four, August. Five and six. September. So really, it's only sections one and two that may be lagging behind. I mean, we may be ready to go by the time three and four would normally have come in the rotation. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure. I think if we thought that, if, if we're not billing one and two, are we going to bill the second section? And then, so what's going to happen to the first two sections of the city? So we don't bill them. Are, we're going to double bill them in October. That's the next time they would get bills. And we're only going to bill section three and four. It's divided into four right. quarterly. So I don't know. I think you may have to so wait until September. May, yeah, we're, yeah, if until we can get October. them out sooner, we'll, we're going to yeah. get them out. You look tired. It's <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of work here by a lot of people making yeah. this thing happen. Well, still it's exciting to have this thing so it close is. to being ready. Yeah. Yeah. It is. One other detail regarding um, the utility, the credit policy that the board voted on back in February is still a draft. Um, and um, I'll pass this around. Um, so we should put that on the next agenda. On the next, be on agenda. The next agenda for a vote. That's correct. So take a look at this. We're going to have perhaps 
a, a couple changes. We're, we're looking, one of the credits for um, uh, low income and another one for seniors um, is should maybe would make more sense to be an automatic and here we have it that they have to make an application and this is seniors who have applied through the city clerk they're already yeah. approved yeah through the city there's a process they've gone through we had it written that they were going to come and do another application right. mm -hmm. that makes i think sense. it'd be easier for everybody involved right. if that was automatic so that might be one change um the financial board is meeting next week to take a look at this and they may let us know some other comments right. on it. Financial so. management team of the city's meeting next Wednesday. I think Ro has a question. I did. Um, I, I don't want to make your job any more onerous, but I'm just thinking if people are expecting to have a bill for this in their first water bill and it doesn't come, so is there going to be a little note in the water bill about there will be a delay on this? Yeah. We're going to want to try to get the word out. I think that'd be great. I that, mean, because if they're expecting it, it's going to be come and, and, yeah. and especially if we double bill it, right. it's going to give some warning that you're not getting it, <coughs> but you will be getting two bills potentially. We we'll probably have to look at a bill structure for that. She, that's a smile. <laughs> And well, it comes goes in an envelope. It's not just a, a separate bill. I mean, yeah. you have an envelope anyway for the water bill. Yeah. So at least that's not a. Well, postcard would be fine. I mean, it's, if that makes more sense than double stuffing. Uh, we don't have that capability here. I get postcards from you all the time. You do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I manually do though. <laughs> but I'm not and doing eight of them. Right? Ten thousand of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it sounds we like, unless, I mi unless yeah. I'm missing something, it sounds like just sections one and two, if everything went well, sections three and four could go out on time. It's possible. <laughs> All right, yeah, no, no promises. It may, no promises. It, it, yeah, it, it may not be as bad as it you may think. may not. <coughs> we'll see what happens. We're There's a lot of ifs for this first round okay. that mm -hmm. we're working through. All of the work for um, the King Street, Barrett Street drainage thing. That will w once that once we get past the end of the month, that will start being charged to the stormwater fund. That's correct. Can I just ask you? Is that draft that you handed out the same mm -hmm. one that was handed out in February? It was voted on in February. So there's no changes there's to there's that no one. Changes. Okay, no. Yeah. I okay. Okay. All right. I think for the record, BJ. Yeah, if he has one, okay. I just I, wanted to make sure. I think that, that covers that. the stormwater update. Great, thank you. Uh, landfill? Um, not much to report on the landfill, except that um, I believe the contractor is caught up with his punch list items now for, for the closure part of it. And um, we were able to identify a architect for the reuse committee so that um, we have a sign off at the end of the day with the building permit. Um, and I pulled, uh, opened up the building permit today and started filling it out. For the work to be done so hopefully this thing starts moving along that group is dying to get in there just to start are. cleaning up mm -hmm. and i was thinking can't we let that happen so i got the i <coughs> sent susan wait last week the uh, maya liability waivers that need to be signed by any volunteer who's going to work on it mm -hmm. i checked that with joe cook he's fine with that so susan wait has that now i assume she's probably out collecting you are made this morning pardon me Sorry. Uh, so she's out there collecting volunteer signatures as we speak. We don't, still need a building permit to do the demolition work. So that's why I started working on yeah. that today. Okay. And we've kind of, have we sufficiently talked about Church Street? State Street? Does anyone have any other questions? Okay. It no, just it comes up again on the agenda. Yeah. Great. Gary? All set. Mm. I'm all set. Doug, you had everything you wanted to say? Okay. Just acknowledging Rich and Jen and the crews out there working on this whole issue with Church Street and King Street Brook. They've really been hard at it. Uh, including permitting through Nicole Sanford. I mean, 
It's been a great group effort. Thank you. Um, hmm? oh, I, I took BJ for a ride. It's not my turn to speak. But I took BJ for a ride in Anne Marie so they could get I couldn't a, believe. So they could have a visual understanding because we've been talking about it so much. Yeah. And it was, you actually came when it, after we had just cleaned it all out. Yeah. So it looks like an airplane landed, sort of, kind of. All permitted, though. Um, so it's interesting. Those guys are working so hard. So, Rich, if you grub, I assume you you were grubbing the, that wa that uh, slope that comes down toward the bike path. Yeah. Just can we? Do we need any permitting to keep that down? Um, Is that requ was that did that require an emergency yes. permission? Yes. We can't just keep no. that at no. like twenty four inches and no, because of the toe of the slope, it's considered a wetland. No. no, because of the nature of <clears throat> you know the species of uh, uh, plants that are in there now, because of the fact that it's been you know a huge overflow. Mm -hmm. So we can't you know we talked about actually possibly making some kind of a uh, temporary access road that we could use in case we were to run into this situation again. But I don't think that that's going to be possible. And we, we can actually make some kind of a walking path for us to maintain it to walk up and down mm -hmm. as long as we have permission from Mr. Kern. But anytime there's any kind of beaver activity after, if there is any more after the um, 30 day emergency orders, then we have to get another one. Mm -hmm. It just, just kind of continues. So until, until some long term engineering um, process goes into it to how to channel that water properly, mm -hmm. you know, we will always forever have to maintain this. You know, it's a live, it's a live stream. In the middle of summer, it's going to run as hard as it does now. So, I think that's you know, Jim has been talking with uh, Doug and Nicole and uh, Diane about figuring out how to, you know, that's part of this obviously how to long term, right? How to alleviate that at least that one stretch of it because we would have success, I think, doing that possibly. It would take quite a while in the permitting process, but I think that. Uh, from Mr. Curran's point of view, I think he's happy that we're actually yeah, in there. We, we met with uh, Jim and Ned out there, and he was very happy that we were going to be doing all this work. So, 50 years ago, there's potato fields and a brook meandering down the middle of it. But 200 years ago, it was a wetland. So. Oh, what? <laughs> so it's, gone, it's, gone, it's kind of gone full circle. It was a wetland. It's gone full circle. 200. 200. 200. Yeah. Maybe 200, but there was farmland in between. It was farmland. For, uh, it was actively, was the water was actively managed. There was also a canal that ran through there. there was, in fact, there was a city uh, to our farm. Ago. It was, it, yes. Yeah. But at that point in time, we dug out channels and we made the water flow. Right. So. Right. <laughs> David, I think that we missed or wrong. I had something earlier and I can't think what it was, so. We <laughs> adjourn. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, sir. Do you see beavers there? Is, is there obvious evidence of them working overnight? Or no. Where did the beavers go? They ended up eating themselves out of their vegetative delect delectables. So they, so they moved. They actually gone downstream <coughs> somewhere. Really? Yeah. What about Barrett Street, that other side? Is I, those lodges look those, they're not messed up or anything? No. They're not there either? No, I don't I, I think they've really kind of uh, they're waiting for the the uh, saplings to grow up. So they have some <laughs> I mean they basically deforested all the stuff that they really enjoy. Right. I've not seen any beaver activity in there. The last time we had our consultant in there, um, he noted that the only thing left standing was red maples, which are not a fond tree for the beavers to mm. eat. <laughs> so they basically ate themselves out of there, and that's why they were pushing to get up into the current property because of all the lush vegetation up there. There's another place that would have lasted them several years again. And that was the big push is keeping them out of there, getting them into the main marsh. And from what I can tell also, from what I've heard, that no one's seen a beaver sign at all. Freshly cut limbs, trees, any activity at all, mudslides, anything. Yeah, since since last since last year, so it's been well, last, nice. yeah. But they'll be back. They will eventually. They will. But we'll be we'll have our SOP and we'll be very cognizant of. Uh, We're ahead of them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. For now. Yeah, they work just temporary. They work twenty four seven. All right. So we have a motion yeah. to adjourn. Yes, we Second. do. Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Great. Hey, thank you.